Hello, my name is Espen Danielsen. I'm a director of innovation at a little part of the Roskilde Festival Association called Orange Innovation. And I was invited here to tell you about how our experience is with participation, co-creation, doing things together, all the pop words you will hearing all the time, interaction. Is it pop or is it real? Um, and what I will tell you about is how we have experienced this coming from an old, probably the oldest and the biggest rock festival in Europe, 130,000 people gathering together for nine days, and no other interaction in the history than drinking beers and seeing a band. So basically, if you invite a music booker to talk about this, he or she would hate it and say interaction only makes a shitty music program because the experts know which is the good culture to present for the audience. So what is the big challenge here is it's a totally new way of thinking, basically. That's also why you have not sold out today, because many people think interactions and participation and gaming is for fun, not for real. And what I would say is I can see some trends saying this is going heavily, heavily into new products, new experiences, and a lot of economy. We see two trends, what we're working with at Roskilde Festival. One is extreme convenience. I don't want to do anything. I just want to pay and have full service. In the festival business, you see that with all the city festivals. In Denmark, we just had Northside. In Norway, you have uh, um, Oya. Uh, in, in Spain, you have all the festivals of Barcelona where you could go in a cafe, you can sleep in a hotel, you can just wake up nicely and see some music and go back home. At, at, as less participation as possible, as easy as you can be, just want to pay. That's one trend. And besides that, is of course the big trend. I want to create the history. I want to be part. I just don't want only to look up what's happening. I want myself to be on stage in what is really happening. And if you look at Roskilde Festival, we came from four days of music and some camping. For the last, last five years, we have now been eight days of huge activity. The part not known in the media is the part outside the orange stage. Today, it's five or six days of a huge city. It's the fourth biggest city of Denmark, running for eight days, 135,000 people last year or this year. Uh, together, doing activities, all kinds of fun, interesting, and activities they create themselves. To give you some few examples, you should go to Roskilde Festival to see them more. The oldest one is called Camp of the Year. 80% uh, of our guests go together in groups, more than 10. Uses a shitload of money and time, nearly most of them half a year before they come to the festival to create their own theme and their own storytelling of the camp. If you go on YouTube, you can find Camp Coffin from Oslo. You know that the Norwegians have a very special feeling of hard rock. So when you come from Oslo and you are a lot of guys and a few girls who want really to make a camp at Roskilde, you bring your own boombox gear to make your own party. But they not only do that, they build it within a coffin. So they used, I think for this festival, around 100,000 Danish kroner, half a year of working, to build a huge thing that they need transportation by boat, to Roskilde, and which was a huge music central with a coffin. And if you ask them why, they just say, it's nice with a coffin, because we are Norwegians, and when we come to Denmark, we get drunk, and then we can carry one guy in the coffin. <laughs> so no rational explanation, it's just fun. But if you look into it, they had a storytelling for their lives, 
we made a little documentary on their travel and showed what happens, but they were just one out of more than 400 camps really participating a lot. It creates a lot of problems for a festival organizer because the audience then starts some activities we cannot control. Every organizer hates that. This year they started on SMS and Facebook and saying, bring your pillow, we want to do a pillow fight at Roskilde Festival. Could you imagine a thousand people in a pillow fight? <laughs> we have feathers all over. Or bring your alpine skis. Then we bring all our fire equipment to put up foam on the only hill we have at Roskilde Festival so you can go alpining. <laughs> if you ask our music bookers or art organizers, they would never have programmed these events. It started a long time ago, and the most uh, well-known activity the audience have made is the naked run. 100 meters naked. Now with a water gravel and so on, but still the tradition has been there all the time, but it has been very hard for us as organizers to take part. We had the real festival with the music, and then, you know, the fun part, the music part, uh, where the audience got drunk. But what we can see now is that the audience are at least, some would say even more, interested in that part which is not focused on the music. They want to do their own storytelling. And therefore, we of course, as event organizers living by selling tickets, suddenly discovered that it could be nice to understand our audience and work with them. I should say that it's quite hard work, so I warn you, if you start communicating and really co-creating with the audience, it's hard to stop again. <laughs> it costs a lot of time and a lot of money, and they not always do what you ask them for. <laughs> so it's a warning, if you step down that road, take care. Another example is the game city. We had for several years, some of the organizers here helped us make a big game People had a role-playing game going on at the whole Roskilde Festival. Uh, each day they can get up and get some tasks or challenges that they should do. Uh, quite inspired by the Camp of the Year winner, which is Finding Wally. They are all dressed up like Wally. And what is the activity? Of course, to get lost, because Wally wants to be found. So their activities every day get lost, and hopefully you will be found. <laughs> so if you're away a whole day, you have success, if you are then found by nice people. And it's quite easy to get found at Roskilde Festival. The whole concept is quite good thinking. They have never bought a beer on Roskilde Festival since they started this activity, because they are found by others all the time who want to help them. Please find Wally. The, hill, the game city has now grown to be extremely big. Just to give you an example, we have 3,000 women playing street food, uh, soccer, partying up in teams. We have the wedding team, we have the cat team, we have the golden team. They are all dressed up, looking so lovely. Uh, there's more than 15,000 men looking at the football matches. They are just coming to play football, but it's a whole setup. It's totally growing and quite special just because they're making the storytelling around it. We also had Street City with a huge skateboarding area where you really challenge each other and running on roller skates or skateboarding. And now we took the chance of taking a part of our festival area, a tenth for 15,000 people, saying, would you create the living space as part of Roskilde Festival? We called it Dream City. And after a few years where we put it at the side of the campsite, because then it was more easy to close it out if the audience didn't do what we expect them to do. Now we have put it in the middle and they invited them to come three months before the festival starts to build up the camp, the activities they really want to take part of. And it's growing like, whoa. An example, a camp made a post office. So you can deliver a letter and, oh, you know, a real one, where you ride on for somebody and they will, through the festival by bike, try to find the guy sh who, who should reach and have the letter. 
the storytelling is like, whoa, these guys never saw any music. They had to ride bikes and deliver out letters. They paid a ticket fee of 2,000 kroner for nine days of festival, shitload of money to ride bikes and give other people letters. <laughs> Please explain me why. And of course, also offline, and you know all these kinds of activities, which is normally thought as uh, marketing. But uh, today, they design our merchandise, and of course, we're selling much more. Um, so it's also a very good economy to put out the stuff you dare. Our apps, we for several years thought as a good organizer, we should have a very good app. The first year, we, we made an app, really good app for many, many applications. The audience themselves made a beta one. And then there was all the audience saying, please, Roski, look at the unofficial app. It's functioning quite much better than your app. <laughs> Why don't you work with your audience? Today, we have a whole app lab where we put out our data for free. And last year, we had 13 different uh, labs, uh, apps for all kinds of things. I would never have thought that it's a very good idea to have an app when you put it in the air during a concert, it will blink following the rhythm of the music. <laughs> we would never have built that ourselves. It was very used at Roskilde. <laughs> and then to my work today, because this has grown so heavily and so quickly, we also have a problem at Roskilde Festival because we are still a music festival. And we haven't yet found the cool concept of the audience booking the music program. So in the core thing of our event, we do not dare to work closely with the audience. You can wish for bands to play, but as you all know, we decide who plays. So right now we have created a laboratory, we call it Orange Innovation where we will fully start up a new festival, new activities on the behalf of the audience energy. So now we take a stand that all we can see is really launching at the festival with the audience. We can also see that the framework of a music festival is very limited to work within. So therefore we will start the next Roskilde festival, so we have two, it's much more fun, um, next year in August. Uh, with the focus of this. And we work uh, from a model of co-creation, which I cannot tell you here in a short while, but I'll just show it with a lot of text, so we have no chance of really understand it. But now I'm interesting, and maybe I can come back another day. <laughs> um, but we work with the different roles of participation, and the key thing we have learned is we all work with the very engaged people. And that's very wrong. What is totally interesting is how to make participation possible for the people who didn't knew that it could be very nice to take part. On the internet, people are quite good at this. It's called low threshold. You may all know the lol cats. Do you know the pictures of cats on the internet? A very good example of low level participation. Try it. We did several times just putting our website. Today we are talking booking. Could you please inspire us by lol cats? We get thousands. And when you at first had the first part of participation, then you can take the next step for more and for more. But normally we make all the activities we want people to participate in too complicated. So in Danish it's called the three S's. It doesn't fit in English, but we work that all our, our activities should be simple, visible, and funny, if we should be able to have people to participate quite easy. The most difficult part there is simple. All participation co-creation projects are so well thought that it's only the people who have developed it which really can participate. Of course, it's not any of you, you are the experts, but you know some. 
We did it wrong many, many times. This area, Dream City, we thought it could be so cool if everybody would upload their ideas for what they would build at Roskilde Festival on a web page, then debate it and vote for it, and then decide what they should do. Uh, it was a copy of something normally called democracy. And then we thought then we would run to Roskilde Festival and build what they agreed on. They didn't. Some had a very fun thing going on on the web page, and some others built something totally different on the festival sites. That was a big learning, way too complicated. So we use this model to challenge ourselves all the time. Um, I can, you can have it afterwards. I can upload the, the, uh, the, the slides, no problem. And what is very interesting to see if you need all the roles for a project really to grow. For example, the viewers. If nobody looks as what everybody is co-creating, there's no storytelling. That's why social media is so fun. But if you make a project only for three people building something funny nobody knew, knew anything about, it's not exploding. So it's very important also to invite the people to look into the process. If I could sell tickets for the process of building Roskilde Festival, I think that would be extremely interesting than just coming to the Roskilde Festival. I have a problem in my organization that they really want to be finished before I invite all the guests. But next year I will start again, selling some secret tickets for people coming in and just looking what is happening. Maybe they can even participate in building the festival. So uh, therefore in August next year, um, I would like to invite all of you uh, to uh, very special place in Roskilde called Musicon. It's an old polluted area uh, where there have been a huge factory making concrete, uh, you know, for roads and for buildings and all this stuff. In Danish it's called beton. Um, and they have, of course, polluted the whole area, earned a lot of money and then moved to Poland. It's the industrial way of thinking. So now we have all this uh, area with a huge shitload of old big factory buildings. Super cool as a festival organizer in Denmark because it's always raining. Then we can go inside and we have invited people to come for two weeks period to build insane stuff that you never could imagine. We are right now working on which challenges would we set up. We are very inspired by the festival you probably know as Burning Man outside in the desert in the US. Here they mostly made making art. We would like to make daily things as well. But of course we think it could be fun. Do you know people who hack pictures in the wall? It's quite fun. Now you can do it with small explosives. Much more fun. Put up your own explosives, see what's happened. <laughs> if you destroy the wall, it was polluted anyway. So, so we will work a lot with this techy, geeky, uh, gadget way of thinking. Where I was just in uh, Texas. Uh, to a huge conference. Here the musicians wasn't the rock stars. The nerds was. The guy who wants to build his own rocket to Mars. He said, I really want to travel to Mars and I don't want to die landing. So the whole focus was today you can do it yourself. Maybe you know the movement. It's called Makers. It's growing heavily. It's basically like we have been, had in many years in Denmark and Sweden and Norway, got a sell. You know, in your old, fact, uh, old uh, garage, you are building stuff, but now you can put technology into it and being able to build totally crazy, funny stuff. We see this growing way. People are talking about the 3D printer. It's a fun thing. It's only making small plastic pieces. The really fun thing is you can put computer digital design into a saw, or some cool thing creating big stuff. Real stuff, not only plastic things on a 3D printer. So what we really want is people building their own homes, uh, doing their own living, uh, building their own cars. They're not allowed to drive them in Denmark, but no problem. We'll go to Sweden um, <laughs> and so on. So I hope this could inspire you for the way of thinking. Go into look at the makers movement, go on YouTube, say write makers and see what comes up and you will see a participation movement where there's no debate.